hope for survivors after one of the most heinous attacks in Russia's three-week-long invasion of Ukraine. Officials in Ukraine saying people were seen walking out of a bombed-out theatre several hours ago in the besieged city of Mariupol. The same building that hundreds of traumatised families had been using to take cover from Russian attacks. Ukraine's defence minister, with searing criticism directed towards whoever, ordered that bombing. You can see from the maps, from the drones that are around this theatre, big letters of children were written so that the pilot of the plane which was throwing the bombs could see. And still, in spite of that, this monster has bombed the theatre. Well, Nick Payton Walsh is reporting today from Odessa. He tells us the Mariupol theatre attack only adds to the pain and suffering of a city feeling the full brunt of Russia's brutal tactics in what is Vladimir Putin's unprovoked war. Becky, obviously very encouraging news emerging from Mariupol of people coming out of that bomb shelter, unknown the numbers that were in there or the numbers that appear to have survived at this stage. It is still a patchy piece of information at this point, but certainly that doesn't detract from the clear decision made uh, by Russian forces to launch an airstrike against a building that had children written large on both sides of it outside. Here's some of the scenes that emerged last night. The flicker of flame here where Russia's barbarism peaked and an airstrike hit a bomb shelter hiding hundreds beneath a theatre, said local officials. The damage so complete, the entrance was reduced to rubble. This satellite image from two days earlier showing the building standing with children written large outside. In case you're still thinking nobody knew who was here, videos had been circulating for days of the hell inside. How over a week of siege and shelling had forced those still living into a space so tight and dark it must have felt like a tomb. Here, he says, is where we give out food to children, women and elderly first. This is the converted cloakroom of the theatre. If this looks like how you imagined the end of the world, for these children, packed in, that may have been the case when the bomb struck. Russia claimed Ukrainian radicals caused the blast. In this room, 15 people, the narrator says. <laughs> Little comfort any parent can give, bar the lie, this would be over soon. <laughs> and below this stall, there are yet more. An entire city forced underground. Little aid allowed in and few allowed out. <laughs> people hear us. Here are children, he says. His appeal is for food, help. Perhaps unaware, it may have led Russian bombs straight to them. The swimming pool was also hit, a place where this narrator says a pregnant woman was trapped under the rubble and where only expectant mothers and those with under threes hid. The Kremlin wants to break or flatten this port, but its defenders still exact a cost still keep them out. This drone video shows the moment Ukrainian fighters hit a Russian tank. The shots come again and again, removing one of the tank's tracks. The crew are later seen hit as they try to flee. No room for mercy in a city that has little space left for life itself. Now, Becky, here in Odessa, heightened anxiety. We've heard sirens in the morning, and we've also heard from a local official commenting on video circulating on social media that seem to show as many as five uh, ships on the horizon. The officials saying that there was no real cause for concern, that these may well have been Russian ships, and they are manoeuvring to perhaps heighten anxiety here uh, in Ukraine's third largest city. But that certainly is working. There is heightened anxiety here, for sure. We we heard last night anti-aircraft gunfire. Uh, it is a city certainly on the edge because all the military activity along the Black Sea coast to the east of where I'm standing is about pressuring here and potentially the Kremlin's goal of encircling or 
exacting some sort of military pressure upon this vital port. Becky.